October 2nd, 2019, the day began with beautiful chants echoing in the Sagar Valley. So, I'm all set and ready for the third of the five Kedars and this is Tungunath. Tungunath is at about 12,000 plus feet above sea at an elevation and uh, it's a six kilometer trek I believe from where the car stops um, all the way up and above that there's another couple of kilometers or maybe it's four plus two I'm not sure um, there is a, a place called Chandrashila where Sri Ram is supposed to have meditated upon Shiva and worship Shiva and where there is um, an energy of moon, very powerful. So, Chandrashila is also a place on the list today. Which is there's also a Shivalinga on the on top of that mountain, just above the Tungnath temple. So, with due prayers and uh, with a heart full of expectations and excitement, we set out to this journey. After that, we'll go and settle at night at Ransi. So we begin our two-day or three-day trek, depending on the weather, depending on how we are able to do it, to the fourth Kedar, which is Madh Maheshwar, which is um, another 45, 40, 45 kilometer trek. So we will take that tomorrow. But for now, it's Tungnath. Jai Bholina. It was a two-hour drive from Hotel Rudra in Sagar to the village of Chokta. The drive through the little hamlets early in the morning and views of the vast Himalayan valleys were of course breathtaking. Finally arrive at Chopta. So this is uh, the little village called Chopta, and uh, we have our car is parked here. We are going to head out through uh, this gate right here. This is going to take us all the way up to the temple up there again, once again in the clouds. It looks like Shiva is unrelenting in his training. <laughs> so it looks like we're going to once again walk into the rain. We're going to have a hot cup of chai and then head out to shake hands with Shiva because Tungnath represents the hands of Shiva. The strength of Shiva that comes here. You see some brave folks are already heading out to the temple. They come well prepared with raincoats and walking, trekking poles and all of that stuff. Awesome. Oh, there goes the leg pain again. <laughs> all the familiar aches and pains. The moment you start trekking, comes back. It's a welcome uh, pain. We are already at an elevation because Tungna is supposed to host uh, a Shiva temple that is the highest in the world or in <coughs> Uttarakhand, in this region, I'm not sure. It's uh, 12,000 some feet up. Yeah. 
I'm gonna let the mule pass. Now the incline is not, at least at this point, not as steep as Rudranath. Though you do get breathless, of course, which is natural, I guess, as you trek. And slowly, the elevation also gets to you. So, let's see how this goes as we head on. The path was well paved throughout, as opposed to Rudranath, which was more or less in the wilderness. At some of these spots where there, it becomes a little treacherous, in the sense, um, there is a very steep, you see this, <laughs> and there is no saving grace, you're straight going down. So, they have built this, these fences, these railings rather. So that's good to know. These beautiful clouds have been chasing us for a long, long time now. It seems like forever. Well, it's just been four days, I think. And it's beginning to drizzle again. Harry Potter movies. Look at that. A mystical figure walking ahead. Clouds, mist. Who knows? Nandi might suddenly spring out from these clouds. A huge bull. Gentle giant. And uh, we have done about two kilometers. We have two more kilometers to go. Up, uh, if you can see behind me, there is this little shack. Every kilometer or so, there is a shack like this. So it's so cold and damp. So how about one cup of nice hot chai? So that's where we're taking a short break, having chai, and then we're heading out. It is really cloudy, cold, damp, and misty. So it's a different energy of Shiva that we are going to experience today and you can see up there it's, it's a pretty steep climb so it goes all the way up and somewhere up in the clouds again is this beautiful temple though the landscape was similar to Rudranath I noticed a lot of pine trees in this trek As I was saying, unlike uh, Rudranath, there are a lot of people here. So you're not ever going to get lost or feel lonely. Uh, some I just passed a group of youngsters listening to hard rock. Uh, maybe they've come for a trekking. I don't know what it is. But you see down there, let's see if I can do that. Down there, the shack where I had tea, it's crowded. So, I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if this camera is catching it. Somewhere it's kind of misty right now. But it's interesting to know that Shiva attracts everyone. You know, the people closest to him are the demonic forces of, we call Ganas, Shiv Ganas. So, I'm one of them, I'm sure. I have a lot of demonic qualities in me. 
I like to break rules. I like to push my body to the limit. You know, <clears throat> speaking of that, I was thinking of this morning. I had shared a short WhatsApp update to a few groups that I knew because I had a brief uh, window into internet. And uh, somebody said, "But is it is all this? This is not what your teacher Sai Baba talked about. And uh, why are you doing this? And isn't this just enough to chant his name?" And so my response to that is, "If that is your path, that is it. That's what it is. This, this is my path. Why? Because when I was 17, and I was fed up with rituals and pujas and chantings." because i was literally raised in that household and i discovered sai baba joined his college i wanted to get in touch with him and you know what broke that ice and what made him come to me and ask my name it was gymnastics it was yoga on the rope it was jumping through rings of fire i I pushed my body to its limit doing something which I never thought I could do and then suddenly the window the spirit opened so that's my path that's the way I learned it to me it's been that that kind of training every time I push my body to the limit spirit blooms from within like a flower it always comes after quote and quotes what they call struggle it's not a struggle anymore it's it's a journey i begin to enjoy so that's how i experienced sai baba he praised me for it he encouraged me in that path he gave me um awards and recognitions in public and in private he said do it keep your body and mind under control keep your senses under control be a warrior that is a lesson i take home that is how i practice spirituality it may not be your path it doesn't have to be your path it perhaps is not the best path but it is a path that op- <laughs> that is open for me i don't see myself just sitting at home the idea is once i'm i begin comfort i begin to become comfortable in a zone in a phase if you will me you don't need to see me at all there all right let me go this way okay so once i become comfortable in a phase in life then a deep urge comes to break through from that step into another one whether it is going higher low I don't care. I, I it, those are all just our imagination. It's a new phase, and that new phase brings in a lot of adventure, a lot of learning, a lot of spiritual and mental growth. To me, that is enlightenment. Continuous learning, continuous expansion, continuously keeping your mind in an unconditional state, never allowing it to be conditioned. never allowing it to judge something as good or bad in that continuous journey lies stillness and in that stillness i experience the shiva energy the sai right now as i speak to you for the last one hour so many memories so many little private conversations suddenly pop in between me and swami and i'm saying oh wow where did that come from because when you spend 15 years with a teacher a lot of his a lot of it is lost and it settles deep inside but when you push this body like this strange things begin to happen i have had such amazing dreams i can't even begin to explain how revealing how powerful they are that is why i love doing this that is why i will continue to do this to me this is 
the real yoga pushing your body allowing the spirit from within to come forth and then let creativity express itself maybe a poem maybe a song maybe tears is this joy and union and kaivalya jai sai ram ha ah, sorry for all that heavy breathing and ha ah, puffing and panting is the age blame the age a little shack here kind of a rest area for people to rest oh wow look at that let me see look at that beauty oh my gosh i hope that camera gets you see osmo pocket is an amazing camera monitor small in this rain i can't dig out my phone see what's looking yeah i think it's getting it oh gosh so beautiful om om i can hear my own echo om sent out the ohms into the valleys hopefully it'll come back to us when we come as a group I'll send some more ohms for world peace samasta loka sukino bhavantu <laughs> and there in the distance i saw the temple tower shrouded in the clouds clouds have completely covered there's a temple you hardly see it from here to change into my favorite clothes the way traditions <clears throat> demand that we visit these temples just like we wear whites when we visit the temple inside the temple presence love to be part of these really old traditions so i take the extra ones go that extra mile you see to change into the traditional dhoti i don't know if you can see that in wear the kurta and then i feel like i'm part of some many centuries ago i've done this before so a few minutes and then we are headed on headed off to the temple i don't know how much we can record there we'll try and get as much as you can from the outside and as, as of course i don't think they allow us to take videography inside jai bholenath so this is the entrance uh to the sacred temple i've been given a <clears throat> a lot i'm going to fill some water in it for the puja inside and then let's see what happens i'm going to fill water from here again it's one of the sacred streams from the mountains Shivoham 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 It was such an amazing experience. I was inside. There the pujari took me. He we did Abhishekam to the Lingam, Kaivalya Lingam. Kept him 
kept the lingam next to the main tunganat lingam spent about half an hour filled heart is so fulfilled this is parvati devi's mandir and then those are the five pandavas who first came here and then there is bhairavnath the temple of bhairavnath that's out there it is beginning to rain but the heart is so warm and filled with joy such an old temple and such a beautiful quaint such a fantastic place for a temple to be how did the pandavas discover this both of the dimension the energy is a consciousness just bursts forth expands people ask me you follow sai baba and he's everything to you then why all this to me this is the cosmic form of sai i feel it in my bones i feel it in my bones So having finished the puja we are now on to trekking to Chandrashila a kilometer up see it's way up there The path to Chandrashila from Tungnad was similar to the Rudranath trek even though the distance to Chandrashila was only about 2 kilometers there weren't too many takers for this rather difficult journey so it was quiet and meditative all along <laughs> can you believe it the sun is actually out <sighs> keeping my fingers crossed now another 10 15 minutes Ten minutes, maybe. It just becomes slow when you're coming at this height. <sighs> Look at that. <sighs> What made this journey exceptionally memorable was the most gorgeous view of the mountains all around. Right now the valley is covered with clouds. We'll hang around for a bit to see if it clears. Jai Shri Ram. Jai Shri Ram. Yeah, Ganga Dham. Oh 
मदर गैंजस ओ डिवाइन एनर्जी प्राइज वाटर फ्रॉम द टॉप गिव सम वाटर टू द साउथ ऑफ दिस कंट्री इट्स पार्च्ड सो स्टीकिंग ऑल दोस पीपल इन माय माइंड माय हार्ट सेंडिंग प्रेयर्स सो द वाटर्स ऑफ गैंजस रीचेस डाउन टू द साउथ This is a divine temple. Small. I'm trying to capture cosmic energies in a lens. Do that with reverence and humility. All right. You know me by now if you're watching these videos. I am a crazy believer. If I wasn't, I would do. I would be one now. This place <laughs> it's the tingling all over my body it's so amazing it's so amazing and to think that that place down there that place is where sri ram sat and did penance 432 into 2 is 864,000 plus another 5,000 of curry. 869,000. So let's round it up to 870,000 years ago, before the Dwapara Yoga. Sri Ram, there, sat there. This energy of this mountain speaks for itself. You can feel the power of this tapas here or the penance. It's amazing. I'm going to sit there for a bit. I'm just going to enjoy this place so much, just for a little bit. Deva ya di mahi tanno rudra prachodaya at tat purusha ya vidmahe maha deva ya di mahi tanno rudra prachodaya at shivo ham shivo. Shivo ham, Shivo ham, Shivo ham, Shivo ham, Shivo ham, Shivo ham. Shivo ham, Shivo. could i would stay here longer and i'm definitely coming back to spend a whole day just on top of this hill to meditate to chant to sing there is nothing around here and now right now this is so clouded you can't see a thing around and yet you know you are 12 13000 feet above It's almost as if Shiva has given this wonderful opportunity to just focus on him and not on his creation. So Prakriti a Parvati is stepped aside. So we can focus fully on Shiva consciousness. Believe me when I say this this is not Jai Bolenath you're not here to for the view you may have thought you came here for the view the energy here is accelerating so much so my body is so warm look at me i i am not feeling cold at all neither am i shivering it's just perfect perfect now i can understand why the yogis would meditate in these hills it's not you don't feel cold it's a sense of warmth the sense of somebody empowering you there is a presence 
शिवो हम शिवो हम शिवो हम शिवो Please consider subscribing to our channel on YouTube, the KYG channel, so you stay tuned to fresh yoga and spiritual content from KYG. Thank you for watching. Enrich your practice. Empower your mind. Enlighten your spirit. Namaste. Clean. Clean.